All right, my purpose today is to try to explain some of the questions from the Dimming 66 questions uh, that, are, that come from his book. And uh, you'll notice I'm gonna be skipping around. Uh, some are quite obvious. Uh, so these questions, trying to explain the questions, but also what to expect when you go to do your diagnostic with a company. What's gonna happen when you ask question number one, constancy of purpose? Has your company established constancy of purpose? If yes, what is the purpose? If no, what are the obstacles? So what do you expect them to say on this? It would be virtually impossible for them to know that constancy of purpose is continuous improvement to stay in business, provide jobs, and serve society uh, with the involvement of employees and, and customers. So you might get all kinds of answers for this, uh, like to stay in business. Okay, how? Uh, to make money, to be profitable, things like that. So when you get these answers, you might have to go back and explain to help. We are here to help the company. Uh, explain that uh, constancy of purpose, uh, maybe they should consider continuous improvement, getting the employees involved and getting the customers involved. Now, if they're kind of off on this, uh, we're kind of shot in the foot here. Uh, do all employees know about the stated constancy of purpose? Dimming is getting at, well, first of all, we have to have the constancy of purpose. And does everybody know about it? Many times management op operates in a silo, isolated office. They think that if they have the purpose, then, <clears throat> you know, we might mention it in a newsletter or a memo or something, but that's it. Uh, do all employees know about the stated constancy of purpose? So well, if they don't have one, then that, the answer to that is gonna be no. So how many believe it to the extent that it affects their work? Let's say that they do have a good constancy of purpose. It might not be exactly what we're looking for. Uh, <clears throat> maybe they say to better serve the customer. Now that's the top, you're interviewing the top. And how many employees know about it? Well, we're here to serve the customer. Okay, we've heard that. But in reality, you know, how many be believe it to the extent that it affects their work? <clears throat> many times the manager will state things. It, here's why, why we're here. Uh, they even might have the mission statement, which is probably too long and nobody can remember it. Uh, <clears throat> But does the purpose, why we are here, does it actually get to the bottom and do they believe it and does it affect their work? Many employees just hear a message, uh, never hear about it again. It doesn't, they know about it for a while and then they forget about it, but there's no follow-up. There's no real effort to get everybody on board with the purpose. So, does it affect their work? Well, go around town. Maybe they had a meeting uh, last week about their purpose. Now, it's a week later. Is it affecting anybody's work? Or have they gone back to the same old, same old? In fact, employees, if they hear these messages and then there's no follow-up, they hear a message again, there's no follow-up. Message again, no follow-up. They ain't on board, they ain't getting on board, they don't believe anything. Now. On 1F, we have whom does your president answer to? Whom does your president answer to? Now, you'll get all kinds of crazy answers with this. Uh, the board of directors. Oh, uh, the president, we don't have a president. President uh, is actually the general manager who reports to the owner. Uh, we have two presidents, you know, you'll hear all of this. The point of this, and here again, you're here to help people, Home does your president answer to? I played around with the class uh, when we first started doing this, and I let them think about it for a couple of days. And they would answer. Well, you answer. Uh, who does the president answer to? 
oftentimes it's the board of directors. And board of directors are very popular around here. Uh, so who does the board of directors answer to? The chairman of the board or the owner? Uh, and I would say, no, 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 no. Think about it. Who does the president answer to and who does the board of directors answer to? Well, this answer should be the customer. And in order to get the customer satisfied with what the customer needs, we need to get the employees on board. So, if you ask me, the answer to this question is, should be the employees and the customers. Who does the board of directors answer to? Well, the board of directors are gonna be out of business if they don't report to the customers, because if there's no customers, we're out of business. <clears throat> now, number two, where do you want to be in five years? Somebody, uh, some famous person said, uh, I can tell you where you're gonna be in five years if you just tell me what you do right now. Because is this a situation of no change, no transformation, we're gonna keep doing the same thing and just survive. How, what about continuous improvement? Better serving the customer. Having happier employees that are willingly to serve the customer or make great products. How will you accomplish these aims? Well, you'll probably get some uh, kind of answer. We want to expand or something like that, but then ask how they will do it. And does the customer come up, continuous improvement come up, uh, getting employees on board come up? <clears throat> now, why is transformation of management necessary for survival? They won't know what you're talking about. Transformation, what does that mean? Uh, so, the point here is, why is transformation of management necessary for survival? Well, first of all, it has to start with the top, and we have to go down and transform, actually, the next level of managers, and the next level, if there is one, or the front line. But why is it necessary for survival? Well, people have been doing these diagnostics around the country. I don't know if the, the companies pay attention really or do they forget, do they take some of this stuff to heart? But if you're a competitor, and I'm kind of thinking of a company right now, if your company, if your competitor is transforming, they're turning their, their management from management into leadership. They're not the boss and the cops, they're supporters. Uh, <clears throat> they're continuously improving. They're doing everything they can to get their employees to adopt these values of continuous improvement. Well, you're going to be sunk. You're going to be sunk. So why? Well, you're going to get a blank stare, but you can explain it to them. Uh, if you're just sitting there to survive, somebody's going to come in and take your lunch. You can't assume that everybody is just going to sit there status quo. Creating a critical mass of people uh, uh, to help with change. We need a critical uh, mass of people, a minimum amount of people to keep the thing going, the transformation uh, going. And uh, are you creating a critical mass of people? What we need here is uh, believers. It's difficult for managers to change. It's difficult to go from an authoritarian jerk to a caring, supportive coach. So we have to get a critical mass of people, a minimum amount of people to keep the, the fire burning here and get them on board with continuous improvement and trying to better serve uh, the employees so they serve the customer. Do all levels, here we're getting tricky again, do all levels of management take part in the new philosophy? If you just announce it, it's got to stick. Does it affect people's work? <clears throat> Do all levels of management take part in the new philosophy? Here again, talking about the question, but also what to expect in the diagnostic. Uh, what's the new philosophy again? We don't even know what that is. So that's going to be a problem. Hopefully, we'll be able to help uh, the general manager to 
kind of uh, accept this and let it start uh, cooking in their head. Uh, so can, okay, so do all levels of management take part in the new philosophy? Right. Now, can any of them initiate proposals for consideration? Can any of the managers in the company come to the boss or the, this general manager and say, hey, I've got an idea for continuous improvement. Uh, it's gonna cost us this, but the benefit is this. And Okay, can they? Question one. Answer is yes. More important question. Dimming stuff, dimming smart. Do they? You've all heard about the open door policy. Oh, we have an open door policy. Actually, I think you should have a no door policy. So people don't, you know, just get rid of the door or leave the office, remove the barrier. But everybody's free to come, but do they? Do they? Are they really believers in this thing? So there's no instant pudding. Sometimes we'll have false starts. We'll try out something and it doesn't stick, but we continue to, to push, push, and get people on board so the transformation can go all the way down to hell. The continuous improvement initiative to better serve the customers. So, man, these are tough questions. These are tough questions. You got to help the person you're interviewing understand some of these things. So, uh, it's tough. That was questions one, most of them, two, I think most of them, and question six.